For this video, I would like to introduce you to a setup jig that my friend Al Amante and I came up with after seeing some common issues people were having in accurately setting up their guide rail and fence on their Festool MFT3. But before I do that, I would like to thank you for stopping by to watch this video. And if you're new to the channel and like what you saw here, please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button before you go. So with that being said, let's begin. The Reb is a two-piece 3D printed pocket-sized jig that allows you to quickly and accurately set up your guide rail and fence based on the 20mm hole pattern on your Festool MFT top. This 3D printed jig is designed to be durable, lightweight, and most importantly, precise. We recommend you start off by making sure your top and rail are free from any debris. I remove both feather keys from the profile so the brackets have nothing to reference to. Now when sliding the rail onto the hinge bracket, you want to make sure that the feather key is loose enough so the guide rail has plenty of play. When setting the guide rail, you want to make sure that the holes on the jig are closest to the rail. This will ensure that the curve line will be in between two columns of holes. With the jig placed in the table, slide the guide rail until it fully seats against both setup blocks. At this time, you're going to want to lock that back bracket into place. Next. Slide the front bracket support under the guide rail and raise it so the pin, or notch if you're using the Festool bracket, is in the slot of the guide rail. Then lock that height into place. Now as you slide the guide rail, be sure to keep it flush against the blocks. Once you have the rail positioned where you want it, lock the front bracket into place and then tighten the feather key that's inside the guide rail on the hinge bracket. Now your guide rail should be at 90 degrees, but just to be on the safe side, Let's go ahead and check it for square. If your rail is set correctly, you shouldn't feel any pull left or right when you go to raise it up, which I don't, and it will register perfectly on the support bracket when you go to lower it into place, which it does as you can see here. This next demo is going to show you how I go about locking in the height of my guide rail to the most commonly used material in my shop. You may go about it a little different than I do, and that's fine. I just wanted to show you what works best for me. Now as you're watching this demo, you'll notice the pin on the front bracket becomes off after I raise the rail. That's because of the amount of play in the hinge bracket, and that's why I don't lock the height adjustment on the hinge bracket until the pin is seated in the slot, the rail is sitting flush on the material, and the height is locked in on the front supporting bracket. With everything locked in and set to the height that I want it to be, the guide rail goes up and down with no pull to the left or right as before, and it registers perfectly on the front supporting bracket with no play. Now my preferred method for setting the fence to my MFT3 is to first place the protractor clamp on the profile, then slide the protractor head onto the clamp, and then slide the fence onto the protractor head, but leave everything loose. I'll then place the blocks in my table, and then slide the assembly so the fence fully registers against the alignment blocks. Then I'll tighten the clamp on the rail, lock the protractor into place, and lastly, I'll lock the fence. 
and yes, in that order. Once you have the fence locked into place, now would be a good time to add the fence support to your rail. As the setup demo comes to an end, I hope I've shown you not only how easy our jig is to use, but also how accurate your setup could be when you use it. I plan on doing a 5 cut test video with this setup in the future, so please keep an eye out for that video. Now if something in this video is unclear, or if you have a general question about our setup jig, please leave your comment or question down below, and either Al or myself will address your comment or concern. Be sure to check out the description for links to everything I used in this video as well as a link to our Etsy store. I'd like to thank you for watching, and until next time, take care, and have a good one.